Hello there geographers and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're starting unit two of AP Human Geography. As always, if you find value in these review videos, consider subscribing and checking out my ultimate review packet for more help with your AP Human Geography study. Today, the total world population is about to reach 8 billion people. Depending on when you watch this video, we might have already passed this number. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, is the world becoming overpopulated? It seems like an easy question to answer. After all, 8 billion people is a lot of people. But this question the question is more complicated than you might think. One problem we have with answering this question is that people are not spread out evenly across the globe. This becomes evident when looking at this cartogram, which shows the different populations of each country in the world. Today we can see that there are four big regions that have over two-thirds of the world's population living in them. South Asia, which consists of countries like India, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka. East Asia, which is made up of countries like China, Japan, and the Korean Peninsula. Southeast Asia, Asia, which is made up of a variety of different countries, such as Thailand, the Philippines, and Vietnam, just to name a few. And lastly, Europe, which unlike the other regions, has people located closer to natural resources instead of grouping around the rivers and oceans, which is particularly due to the Industrial Revolution and the location of raw resources. So since each country has different populations and their populations are dispersed differently, it's hard for us to answer the question of is the world overpopulated? In fact, maybe we should be asking, are certain countries overpopulated? Well, if we change our scale from a global scale to a national scale, or even a local scale, we can see that even this question becomes more difficult to answer. For example, when looking at China's population density, notice that the majority of the areas with a higher population density are near the coast of China, or near China's river. And this isn't something by chance, or something unique to China. In fact, if we look at different population clusters around the world, we can see common themes that revolve around the different site and situation factors. Throughout the world, we can see that people tend to settle by rivers, oceans, fresh water, and fertile soil. This is because people need food and water to live. Plus, access to oceans and rivers that connect to other geographic areas allow places to participate in trade and commerce with places around the world. We can see that people also gravitate towards areas with economic opportunities, political stability, desired cultural preferences, or may live in a place due to historical events that create the settlement. So even when looking at a country, it can be hard for us to tell if the country overall is overpopulated because people will be dispersed differently in each country. Now since we talked about places where people want to live, we also need to talk about places where people generally do not want to live. These are often places that are too dry, too wet, too cold, or too hot. Areas that are too dry make it difficult to grow crops, which does not help create a stable society. A similar problem actually exists for places that are too wet. Soil becomes oversaturated, which ends up killing the crop. Places that are too cold or too high are often difficult to live in and do not provide the adequate resources needed for society to flourish. Today, thanks to advancements in technology, we can see that people live in places where it was never possible to have permanent settlements before. This ability for us to modify and change our environment to make less hospitable areas more hospitable is known as environmental possibilism, a concept we reviewed from Unit 1. So we can see that depending on the different site and situation factors, a place may be more likely to have a higher population density, while other factors may promote a lower population density. Remember, population density is different from population distribution. Population density is referring to the number of people in an area, while population distribution is the spread of people in an area. When looking at density, we can see that there are three different types of density that you'll see in AP Human Geography. The first density is the arithmetic density. To find this density, we are going to take our total population and divide by the amount of land. This is one of the easiest densities to find. This density shows us how many people people are living on each unit of land. If this number is really high, it means that there are more people living near each other. If the number is a smaller number, it shows that there are fewer people living on each unit of land. One thing to remember when looking at this density is when we say that we're dividing by the total amount of land, we mean the entire land map, which could include land that is not inhabitable or land that currently has no one living on it. So just because a country's arithmetic density is 80 does not mean that each unit of land has 80 people living on it. The next density is the physiological density. To find this density, you're going to take the total population and divide it by the total amount of arable land. Notice here I said arable land and not total land area. We are only factoring in land that can produce food. This density shows us how much food we need to produce from one unit of arable land. The higher the number is, the more food we need to produce and the more stress we are going to put on our land. Societies with a really high physiological density risk desertification and risk destroying their arable land by depleting the nutrients in their soil, which may force them to have to rely on importing food 
food from other societies or countries instead of being able to grow it themselves. The last density is our agricultural density. To find this density, you're going to take the amount of farmers and divide them by the total amount of arable land. This density shows us how advanced the technology is or how efficient a society is at producing food. The higher this number is, the more manual labor a society is using to produce food, which would indicate that there's a less technology being used in the field of agriculture or less effective agricultural practices being utilized. The lower this number is, the less human labor is needed, which indicates more efficient agricultural practices. These densities by themselves show different aspects of society, but where the real insight comes from is when you compare them. Here, let me show you. Let's say we are comparing two countries. Here we have country A and country B. Right away we can see that country A's population has a lower population density. Their arithmetic density is only 32.3, while country B's arithmetic density is 109.63. Now we can also notice that country A has a larger population, but if we look at both countries' physiological density, we see that country A's physiological density is lower than country B. This tells us that country A has more arable land and will have an easier time feeding their population. The amount of food that needs to be produced per each unit of land is less for country A than it is for country B. But at the same time, we can see that country A is less efficient with their agricultural production. Their agricultural density is 3.88, while country B's agricultural density is 2.80. And while that is not a drastic difference, it does show us that country B has slightly more efficient agricultural practices or uses more technology for the production of food. All of this tells us that country B has less of a need for people to work in the field of agriculture, which allows those people to be able to work in other industries, which will lead to more economic growth in the future. Remember, if countries need more people to work in agriculture, that means less people working in other areas of the economy. Understanding these different densities allows us to gain insight into different geographic areas around the world. If you need more help understanding these different densities, go check out my ultimate review packet. There's more practice in the packet to make sure you're understanding all these concepts. But before you do that, you need to answer the review questions on the screen right now and check your answers in the comment section down below. Don't forget also to subscribe if you found value in this topic review video and you want to see more AP Human Geography content. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time online.